Hey everyone, it's Bobby from Dig Coding here and this is another video in the Integrating APIs into a Django Project playlist on YouTube. So before I jump into the video, I'd just like to say if you are feeling generous, then there's a link to our Patreon page in the link below. All pledges help us create content of a better quality and a higher pace, which can't be a bad thing, right? So like I say, if you're feeling generous, then please click on the link and make a pledge. And also, if this is the first time visiting this channel, then just subscribe and like and share the content as that is also a massive help. So this playlist, link to which is just up here, I am trying to integrate as many APIs into Django projects as possible. I get it up on a GitHub and then you guys as developers can clone those repositories and hopefully make use of the code. So um, I did create another video. Uh, it was the uh, Did Django Google Maps API. The link to it is just up here. And in the comments of that video, a few people asked if I could uh, do a deeper dive and create a video that um, looks into waypoints. So waypoints in Google and the Google API is um, a way of setting a start point an end point and the waypoints in between are just stop offs between those two points. So rather than having a route from point A to point B, you can have a route from point A, B, C, D, E, F. And I believe you can have up to 23 waypoints. So I've created a new app. Um, look at my screen. So this is the app. Um, there's some familiarity here. If you are familiar with my GitHub and these apps that I've been creating, they all look very similar. It saves me going through the CSS each and every time. Um, but on the left here, we've got two URLs. We've got root and we've got map, and uh, you've got four addresses here. Now you see I've pre-populated some of them, but I've got the destination one, which I'll demo in a second. But essentially, when you fill in the fourth one, what it does, it creates a parameter, it appends it to the URL and it redirects you, which all happens in the view. Um, so let's go ahead and add a, an address here. It's using Google's Places API to um, predict an address for this field here. So if I go one, High Street, Chatteris, there you go. So it comes up with a prediction. Click on that and then it does this. Um, it appends this, UR, this parameter to the URL. I don't know if you can see that there. And then it redirects you to demo map. The start point it comes up with the uh, longitude and latitude, destination, longitude and latitude. It's the duration. The duration is the, um, the duration from the start point to waypoint one, waypoint two, and then the destination. The distance in kilometers, and then you've got this here, the directions with a click here. Before I click that, underneath here you've got the map. So this renders straight into the HTML using the JavaScript from Google, which I'll show you in a second. But if you click the directions link here, it then opens this up, it says leg one, and it has all of the descriptions, the distance and the duration between each. Scroll two and you have leg two and leg three. And that comes up with the, um, the, the route between the different points. So that's the app. I really like this app. It, uh, it could be very, very valuable if you've got a project that you're using uh, different addresses and trying to get routes and trying to work out timings and things like that. So this is a very, very good app that you can really make use of. Like I say, link to the previous video is up here and I did get some comments to say, um, do a deeper dive, so this is what I'm doing. So that is the app. What I'll do now is I'll open up my browser. Okay, so this is the GitHub, this is the repository. Oh, it's got a readme file. Not much else really, we've got a main app, but we'll go through that in a second. In the readme file, you need to um, set up a directory in your local machine, you need to clone a repository and then uh, install the requirements into the um, virtual environment, get the API key from Google and make sure you enable the right bits and pieces, uh, the details of which will be in the description below. So, and that's important, you have to have the right APIs enabled for this to work. Like I say, look in the description below. Uh, that is GitHub. Uh, this is the, the, so there'll be this link in the description as well, but this, these are the docs for Google Waypoints. So this goes a bit of a deeper dive here on what the um, JavaScript, the CSS and HTML needs to look like for it to work. But I've taken this and kind of adapted it for the project. So um, you'll have all of the code necessary to make this work in the project itself. So if I open up Sublime Text, this is the project here. So it's did Django Google Waypoints. I've already got the virtual environment on my local machine. And uh, I've also got the CMD running as well. That's how we looked at the um, uh, app a second ago. So if I fly through these quickly, so this is the settings file. 
Um, in all of the apps now, I'm using Django Decouple. Uh, it allows me to add the API to the project without you seeing it when I'm scrolling around here. Um, but we've imported OS, we've import from Decouple, we're importing config, which you need for the um, decoupling of sensitive information. We've got main in the installed apps. Scroll down, scroll down. I've got language code ENGB, because we're in the UK. And we've got these static files variables here. And you can see we've also got API key here and equals config, which is the syntax for Django um, decouple. In the URL conf, we're bringing in include from URL, Django URLs. We've got settings from conf and we've got static from conf.url static. We've got URL patterns for main and admin here and we've got a if settings.debug. That's right, that's because we're serving up CSS and we're serving up um, logos so the app looks decent, but you need this here uh, for all of that to work. So we don't need to do a deeper dive on that, that's fine. Uh, we will look at main quickly and I will look at the JavaScript in this video because it's quite important for this. Um, we're not doing anything there. We've got, uh, let's look at URLs. So we've got just these two here. We've got root and map, which you've seen. They're the only two URLs I'm using for this app. And we've got views. Basic root um, view here. All is passing through to the context is the API key. That's it. We're taking the API key and we're making, um, we're using that for the JavaScript, which I'll show you. And then we've got the map. So we're passing through uh, parameters to the URL. That's what all of this is here. So we get the latitude for point A, longitude for point A, and we've got B, C, and D. And we're getting it from the get request. So request.get.get, and then we've got all of this here. So that B, C, D, E. No, we haven't got E. So A, B, C, and D. And then we've got, is it, if we've got a lat A, B, C, and D, so we need to have four points of reference for this. So we need to have all four, and if we do have all four, that's when we call the directions API, which is in the mix-ins, and I'll show you that in a second. If we're missing one of these, then we redirect back to root, and in the context, we pass the API key, we pass all of the um, longitude and latitudes, we pass the or origin and the destination, because we're using that for the, um, the header of the table, and the directions, and the directions are coming from the API here. So that's what we're doing in the views. I don't want to spend too much time going through the Django code or the Python code. I want to spend more time going through the JavaScript because that's really where the heavy, heavy lifting is being done. That being said, we are doing an API call using the requests library, and this is it. So it's, the, it's a function called directions, got args and keywords, and we're passing through, uh, remember in the view, we're passing through all of this. So quags.get, and we're getting all of these keywords here. Origin. We're creating a string of the latitude and longitude. That is the syntax that you need for the API call. Origin, destination, and waypoints. And what we're doing here, we're piping the two waypoints. You can have up to 23 waypoints, I believe. And all you need to do is just pipe each and every one of them. So it's latitude C, longitude C. That's the syntax you need. Latitude D, longitude D. And you'd carry on doing that. If you had a few of them, you would probably do a for loop. I didn't want to do that for the app. Um, this is just, I wanted to explicitly say longitude C, longitude D. And so we're creating a variable called results and we're using requests to get, and this is the URL. Um, so it, would, it returns JSON and then we've got the params. So we're passing through origin, origin, destination, destination, waypoints. Like I say, that's the pipe. And the key is the set uh, dot API key. That's that. Directions equals results and we just sonify it. So if we get a status of okay, so it was a good response, then we look at the JSON and we're looking at keywords roots and it's the first, it's the first and only uh, entry in that list and then we're looking at legs because we've got two waypoints. Uh, if you're just doing an origin and a destination, legs would just be a single uh, leg, but because we've got waypoints, we're gonna have, uh, in this case, we're gonna have three. So it's uh, the reason we've got four. We've got four, uh, four points of reference, but from point, a to B is one, B to C is two, C to D is three. That's why we've got three legs. Um, we've got a couple of variables here. These are kind of counters for our distance and duration. That's what we're using in the top of the table. And then for root in range len, so we're, this is the three loops that we're doing. Uh, we're um, plus equal, so we're adding on the value for the distance and the value for the duration, and then we're converting that into something tangible in a second. And then what we do, we're creating a dictionary for the origin, the destination, distance, and duration. 
then we're using the steps, we're looking for the steps keyword. And this is how we get the different steps of the route, okay? So when you uh, clone this, just have a deeper dive and you'll understand what I'm trying to do. We're just looking at the keywords in the JSON response. And then we're appending this to an empty list, which is here, root list, okay? And then we're returning origin, destination, distance. We're creating an F string here. So the distance, it creates, creates um, an integer of kilometers. Uh, sorry, meters, and you divide that by a thousand to get kilometers, and then we're rounding it with two decimal places. And the duration, I've actually used a uh, library called, what is it? What did I do? Oh, I haven't um, added this to the requirements. I think it's called Easy Humanize. Um, it will be in a requirements file when you're playing around with this, but I can't remember where I used that. Let's have a look, go back in the mix in. It probably says it here anyway, probably being a plonker. Uh, format time span. Oh, there you go. Human friendly. That's the library. So from human friendly format time span, and we're adding in the number of seconds and it then creates a string, which is number of hours and minutes, which looks really good on the front end. And then we're passing in the root list, which is this here. So that's what we're doing in Python to make a call. We're doing a lot on the front end as well. So we're using JavaScript to render the we're using JavaScript to make the places API call, um, and that's what creates or predicts the addresses. So it pre-populates the address fields when you're trying to put the four routes or four, four destinations. And then we're doing another API call to render the map and to do the routes. So let's have a quick look at that. Uh, Main.js, we don't need to look at that. It's only, do, this is what um, directions toggle. Oh uh, yeah, this is when you click on the, the here button. So directions here, that's what opens and closes that. So we don't really need to look at that. So we've got the places JS. So we're getting the script. So this is the uh, Google script we're using our Google API key. We're passing that through as a uh, variable in the HTML document, but I won't open that now. Um, we're creating an array here of A, B, C, and D. because we've got four, we've got four reference points, destination, sorry, origin, Waypoint one, waypoint two, and destination, that's A, B, C, and D. So we then do an in autocomplete. So this is the function that uh, does the autocompletion on the reference points. So this creates um, the fields, and then this these is adding a listener. So every time you type the keyboard, so one, two, three, high street, da, 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 da. every time you press a button on the keyboard, this is where it makes the call and it actually gets the predictions. So this is for a number, this is for A, B, C, and D. And when you select the um, address from the list that is predicted, when you select it, it then adds some, it adds the um, longitude and latitude, some hidden fields, which is in the HTML document. But I won't open that up yet, you don't really need to see that. And then once, we, once we've uh, selected it and it's added the information to the hidden fields, it's then calling calculate root or calc root which is a function down here. And what that's doing, that is essentially is creating a parameter which we append to the URL when we redirect. So that's what that's doing. So that's the Google Places JS. That's the first call that we're doing. And then we've got Google Maps.js. So again, we're getting script. This just meet, this just makes sure that we've got the script before we do any, any further uh, loading of the page. So we do that right at the top. Once we've got the script, um, we do the init map. So we instantiate the map itself. And we pass through, well, so we add a zoom rate and we the center point. So that's the uh, origin. So latitude A, longitude A. Um, we then add a const, so it, we're creating the waypoints. So it's location B, uh, C and D. Uh, that's because the uh, destination is point B. So origin is A, uh, destination is B, and the waypoints are C and D. I've done it a bit arse about face there, but never mind. Um, and then we're calculating and displaying the route in the map that we've just instantiated. So we've got the origin, the destination, the waypoints, optimized waypoints is true, and travel mode is driving, okay? Uh, and providing it's all, all okay, it sets the directions into the map that we've instantiated, and if it's not, it fires up an alert, and then it, it uh, assigns us or redirects us to the root URL. So they're the two JavaScript files. So um, I don't need to do any more of a deeper dive than that. We're doing a API call in the back end using Python, and we're tying that all together with JavaScript front end API calls as well. So, but the JavaScript is pulled straight from Google. So if I just open up the app once again, 
So we're looking at, this is all in Cambridgeshire in the UK, we're looking at an origin, which is in Sutton, a waypoint of Ely, second one of Littleport, and the fourth one of Chatteris, and this is what it comes with. This is the toggle I was talking about. So it opens and closes the route, but this is the map. I think this is a fantastic app. I do think this will add some huge amounts of value to whatever you're working on. So uh, by all means, clone the repository and have some fun with it. So that's the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been informative. Like I said at the start of the video, if you're feeling generous, then there's a link to our Patreon page in the description below. Please subscribe, please like the video, and please share the content. It's a massive, massive help. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.